All right, so hi guys. Um, I will be reviewing DNA replication in preparation for exam number two later next week. And okay. All right, so now let's go into um, prokaryotic DNA replication. And I wanted to mainly talk about initiation and elongation. So um, key terms to know would be origin of replication, um, initiator protein, DNA helicase, single strand binding proteins, as well as DNA gyrase. So you can follow along in the diagram on the left. Um, we have the initiator protein DNA A, which binds to the DNA sequence origin C, and helicase, which is, where's my mouse? Um, Hmm. Okay, um, and helicase, which is driven by ATP hydrolysis, works in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction and unwinds the DNA. Um, Single-strand binding proteins bind to the single-stranded DNA to keep the DNA unwound. And gyrase uh, is a topoisomerase and functions to unwind supercoils in front of the replication fork. More specifically, it works to reduce the positive supercoil to allow for continuous unwinding. Um, elongation, we have um, DNA polymerase 1 and 3, primase, RNA primers, Okazaki fragment, and um, DNA ligase. Um, and as mentioned in previous slides, DNA polymerases need um, uh, a pre-existing uh, three prime OH group on a nucleotide in order to add a new nucleotide. So this is why we have RNA primers. RNA primers are these um, short stretches of RNA nucleotides with a three prime OH group and primase uh, synthesize these primers. And um, on the le leading strand, a primer is required at the five prime end, and on the lagging strand, a new primer must be generated at the beginning of each um, what would be an Okazaki fragment. And um, Okazaki fragments are short links of DNA that um, provide, that are produced by discontinuous replication of the lagging strand. Um, DNA ligase functions to link together these Okazaki fragments in order to create a continuous DNA strand. All right, and then now I also wanted to talk about um, the differences between DNA polymerase 1 and DNA polymerase 3. Um, so both of these polymerases um, synthesize DNA 5 prime to 3 prime, um, and they also both read the template strand 3 prime to 5 prime. However, polymerase 1 has both 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime to 5 prime exonucleus activity, while polymerase 3 um, only has 3 prime to 5 prime exonucleus activity. What this means is um, what 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity means is that um, polymerase can remove RNA primers and it can replace it with DNA to form Okazaki fragments, which then um, get linked with ligase. And 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity allows for the polymerase to go backwards and chew away DNA that was newly synthesized, and it serves as an editing or a proofreading mechanism that removes incorrectly paired um, nucleotides. Um, and in this case, DNA polymerase 1 has a low rate, low processivity. And DNA polymerase 3 has a fast rate, high processivity. High processivity means that it is capable of adding many nucleotides to the growing DNA strand without releasing the template. Okay, and um, eukaryotic DNA replication is very similar to bacterial replication, aside from a few differences. Um, some of these differences include the fact that there are multiple origins in eukaryotic DNA. Um, so it is important that each origin only goes in as phase once. And um, there's also the thing about the issue with uh, linear DNA which we will get to in the next slide. And um, DNA template is also associated with histone proteins and um, eukaryotic DNA replication also involves different um, DNA polymerases. So the problem with linear DNA. In eukaryotes, um, linear chromosomes with multiple have multiple origins, and the elongation of DNA in adjacent replicons also provide three prime OH group, which precedes each primer. In the absence of special mechanisms, DNA replication would leave gaps due to the removal of primers at the end of the chromosome. So, if we look at the newly synthesized pieces of DNA, at the five prime end, we have our um, primer. And once this primer gets removed, um, we are left with a gap. And there is a problem because um, the chromosome will keep shortening after each generation. 
So the solution to this problem involves telomeres as well as telomerase. Telomeres and invertebrates would be um, TTA, GGG repeats, and um, telomerase is a protein that carries RNA, which is used um, as template for DNA synthesis. So um, if we look at the diagram on the right, um, telomerase has the RNA and it base pairs to the DNA strand to serve as a template strand. And um, it elongates the DNA at the three prime end of the leading strand by using the telomerase RNA, uh, the telomerase RNA. And um, it keeps adding repeats. And um, in turn, now DNA polymerase as well as primase can come in and fill in the lacking strand. And so both of these strands get elongated and the um, RNA primer on the lagging strand is now pushed into a buffer zone. And so there will be no gap when primer gets removed. So there will, won't be shortening of the chromosome. Okay, and so that is pretty much all I wanted to talk about for um, DNA replication and good luck on your exams.